Hello, my name is Micah Messer, and welcome to this RNAV approach tutorial for the Boeing 737 aircraft. This tutorial is designed for flight simulation only and should not be used as instructional for railroad aviation or aircraft. If this video helps you in any way throughout, please smash that like button and leave a comment down below or just your favorite emoji like this plane emoji. It all helps the algorithm so that others can find this video when they need help. Thank you in advance. Before we begin flying the RNAV approach, I want to explain a few different systems and terms that we're going to be using in today's video. First, RNAV stands for Area Navigation. Area Navigation is used regardless of the equipment capability of the aircraft. RNP is Required Navigational Performance. RNP requires onboard navigation performance monitoring and alerting capability to ensure that the aircraft stays within a specific containment area. ANP is the actual navigational performance. This is the performance the aircraft is currently performing. Glide path is the descent profile determined for vertical guidance during a final approach. MCP is the mode control panel on the autopilot flight control system. LNAV is lateral navigation, which is an autopilot feature allowing the aircraft to adjust roll and yaw to navigate to a predetermined fixed or waypoint. VNAV is vertical navigation, which is an autopilot feature allowing the aircraft to adjust vertical speed to meet predetermined altitude and speed requirements. And finally, FMS is the flight management system, the entire computer behind the aircraft and is commonly engaged through the FMC or the flight management computer. Before we get into the approach, I want to go ahead and go over the chart. We'll start off by looking at the RNAV approach chart. The one we'll be flying is the RNAV RNP Runway 30 approach into Bozeman Yellowstone International in Montana. Currently, we're on our way to the Livingston VOR. Like almost all other approach charts, it can be broken down into six sections. The margin data, pilot brief, plan view, profile view, minima, and airport diagram. The margin data where it shows us our approach title, in this case the RNAV RNP 30 Bozeman Yellowstone International BZN. It also gives us other information like date valid and latitude and longitudinal. The pilot brief gives us the approach course, the length of our runway, our touchdown zone elevation, and airport elevation. We also have important requirements needed to fly this approach and all the all important missed approach procedures. Finally, the pilot brief section gives us our different radio frequencies. Next, this is the plan view. We're currently over Livingston or on our way to Livingston. The initial approach fix for this approach. Between this waypoint and the next waypoint is 14.3 nautical miles as indicated by the 14.3. While it may appear shorter, you can see the weekly arrow shape between the fixes. That indicates incorrect scale. The heading is 246 degrees and also gives us an altitude. We must maintain at or above 9,000 feet. Also noticed at Livingston, the initial approach fix, it gives us a RNP number of 0 0.30. This means our aircraft must maintain our location within 0 0.30 nautical miles of the magenta line, our path. If we deviate outside of the RNP, we must initiate a go-around procedure. As we move along the approach, you'll see other altitude and distance markers all the way into the airport. Some parts of some approaches will have changes in RNP and speeds, so pay close attention to RNP approaches and RNAV approaches in general. Next, we have our profile view, which shows us what the approach will look like from the side or profile view, hence the name. Before we leave the chart, let's grab the last little section, which is our minima section. In here, we have our minimums. In this case, we'll grab the RNP 0.11 minimums of 471 feet barometric and one statute amount of visibility. Now, let's jump back into the aircraft. As we head our, our way to the Livingston VOR, let's first look at the navigational display, or ND. In the ND, or at the bottom of the ND, you will see both an RNP 
and an ANP number. As you can see, our na actual navigation performance is well within the tolerance of our RNP by being smaller than the RNP. The ANP is a smaller number than the RNP, you're good to go. If the ANP is larger than the RNP, you've got a problem. You need to abort the RNAV RNP approach because you're outside of those requirements. Because we're underneath the RNP, the ANP is underneath the RNP, we're cleared to continue the approach as we currently have filed. It's crucial we pay close attention to this number throughout the approach. Looking at the FMS, in this case the FMC, what we're going to look into is the legs page. Currently I have set that will hold over Livingston. We may or may not do that depending if we get there in time. But looking at the FMS, you'll see a couple of different uh, information. You have different altitude requirements. Remember I talked about the 9,000 feet or above. And then you can see it goes and starts slowly reducing our required altitude. Notice at uh, CIDR, we have 5,700 and above. That's an important number we'll get back to in just a second. All of these numbers are on the approach chart as we talked about. We wanna make sure that all of these are correct before we begin our descent. The last thing we need to do is have an incorrect number in here and we slam into the side of a mountain. Next, let's talk about our autopilot. So we're on LNAV and VNAV. LNAV, lateral navigation, and VNAV, vertical navigation. The computer will automatically fly this approach with these two engaged. The important thing to maintain is the MCP altitude. Currently, we have it set for 10,000 feet. However, in order to fly an RNAV or an RMP approach, you must have the altitude of the autopilot, if it's engaged, lower than your current altitude. In this case, I'm gonna set the MCP to our final approach fix, or when we initiate the glide path onto the final, we're gonna set that to 5,700 feet. Remember that number I told you to keep in your mind? Well, there it is right there. So what we're gonna do, because we have plenty of time, I'm gonna bypass the hold at Livingston, and we're gonna continue on our approach into Bozeman. All right, everybody, we've just crossed the Livingston VOR, and I wanna show you guys a couple things on the primary flight display, otherwise known as the PFD. This guy right here. You'll notice two things. You'll have these white T's on the left and right hand sides, as well as this white eye or post in the center. Then you'll also notice you have a magenta diamond, or it's actually a triangle, uh, sitting here at the bottom. If that magenta triangle sweeps outside of these white T's left and right, which signify the left and right limits of your lateral required navigational path, if it sweeps outside of those, you must go ahead and initiate a go around procedure or an abort procedure, not continue the approach, what have you, uh, because you've gone outside of that required navigational performance like we talked about. So this actually demonstrates your deviation as you fly. So don't be afraid if it does swing a little left and right, just make sure it's not getting all the way over here. Your actual navigational performance at that point might be getting close to being outside your required navigational performance. High winds, crosswinds, things like that might also affect it. So be sure to pay attention to that uh, as you're flying. Now, we're almost to the point of top of descent, but before we do that, I want to do a couple things. I want to go ahead and adjust my course to the course of the approach, or in this case, 303. Do that on both sides. I also want to adjust my heading to the same, 303. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure I've got my landing lights and all my other lights on and everything like that. Notified flight attendants are about to be here for landing. I've got my auto brake set to two and other, you know, pre-landing stuff that you want to make sure you have set. Okay, as we approach our descent, I want you guys to pay attention to something else. In this case, we're going to look at the navigational display. You'll notice on the right-hand side of the screen now, 
you'll see an RNP and an ANP, just like you have down here at the bottom. But this is your vertical required navigational performance and your actual navigational performance in the vertical sense. Now, this is your deviation off of your path. In feet, how far you are off, this diamond will center itself up onto the center once you're perfectly on the path. Don't be afraid if it goes a little above or a little below, but again, make sure your ANP is starting inside or is inside your RNP and make sure this diamond doesn't cross this bottom or this top on your approach. Now right now we're not in final so I'm not too worried about this but uh, definitely something to pay attention to make sure you don't violate those terms. Okay now that we've covered that we're going to continue on our approach and once we have crossed uh, sight, sight, satter, sitri, however you want to say it the final approach fix on the approach we want to adjust our altitude to make sure we're in the go around altitude actually you want to make sure you do that before you get to your final approach fix otherwise you might hit that uh, approach limitation altitude limitation you don't want to do that we are going to go ahead and hit speed intervention and we're actually going to manually set speeds down to our flaps up speed the reason why we do that uh, I've noticed the aircraft generally is going too fast on a final approach I want to make sure that we Go ahead and intervene and set our speeds appropriately. Again, if there are speed restrictions on your approach, make sure you're complying with those. You definitely don't want to violate those. Now we're almost 10 miles out and uh, still maintaining speeds pretty high here. So what I'm actually going to do here is, let's see if it'll let me add some speed brakes. Get us in, there we go. Just want to start lowering that speed and now we're in, just like any other approach, we're in speed and altitude management, making sure we're coming in appropriately, we haven't violated any rules, everything's looking good. Let's say at this point, ATC's given us permission to land. Got permission to land. And at this point, I'm gonna bring this in, and I'm gonna go ahead and drop this all the way to VREF, actually. And it's freaking out there for a second because that's the ticker tape. That's okay. And about seven miles out. Gear's coming down. Flaps coming five. You see things are kind of happening pretty fast on this approach. So you got to you gotta do your stuff for sure. Flaps 15. Start moving this down right there to our. Now we want to make sure we change our altitude. Once you go below 300 feet below your go around altitude, you can go ahead and change this. Just do it quickly. Make sure you go above. Go. go around altitude is 830 feet or 8,300 feet. So that's set. I'm going to get flaps all the way down now. And speed brakes can come in and armed. We're five nautical miles away from the airport. Want to make sure you're in landing configuration at this point. Flaps 40, gears down. Speed brakes armed. And we're ready to land. Now watch as we hit... Uh, Sit re or set or how you gonna say it. Right when we hit 5,700 feet, right there, Satter. They're now on the glide path to the runway. 1,000 feet stabilized. Mission approach altitude has been set.
And there we have it, a simple tutorial on how to fly an RNAV RNP approach in a simulator. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments down below or head over to my Discord channel to give them a go as well. Finally, don't forget to like, subscribe, and join me over on my Locals channel at mnflightclub.locals.com where you can support me for as little as $2 a month and get some great content as well. It really does help out the channel. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time up in the sky.